Wallace. Hello, everybody. Uh, glad you could make it. So, uh, as you see there, the, the title Revolutionary Thinking Changed the Impact of Social uh, Media. Uh, welcome to a whistle stop tour of who knows where. So, a couple of things at the very beginning as I start to talk, um, as we move through the slides. So, um, something I do with all my students in the classroom just be present, don't lurk uh, or turn your screen off. Um, hopefully, uh, People will, uh, the phones won't go off in the background, which is good. Um, if I ask you to participate, by all means, feel free to do that, but just be mindful of um, people communicating and having their opportunity to speak. Uh, and on that note, I'm just gonna move on. So ladies and gents, this is an online session. It's about the way you think. So one of the first things I'm gonna do, the next slide I put up, you have two minutes, ladies and gentlemen, to answer the nine questions. The slide will roll over after two minutes. So you have two minutes with which to answer these nine questions. Here we go. How are we doing? We've had just over a minute. You have about 30 seconds left. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. One actually just about swap over now because that's been two minutes. So let's just address uh, the thing in the ring. Feel free to uh, speak up so uh, and participate. Do they have a Fourth of July in Scotland, Chloe? Yes. Of course they do. Yeah, <laughs> of course they yeah. do. <laughs> of course they do. Exactly. So let's have a look who we've got. So um, some months have 31 days, some have 30 days, but how many months have 28 days, Blake? All of them. Uh, all of all them. Of them. Well done, absolutely, all of them. Well done. If you had one match and entered a dark room where there was an oil lamp, an oil heater, and some kindling wood, which would you like first, Chris? Okay. Anybody? The match. The match, absolutely. You're going to like the match. If a doctor gave you three pills and asked you to take one every half an hour, how long would the pills last? Laura, number two. Okay, they'd last an hour because you take one, 30 minutes, take another one. Another 30 minutes, take the third one. So it lasts an hour. The farmer had 17 sheep and all but nine die. How many is the farmer left? Chloe? <laughs> I put eight. And that's the last one I got to. <laughs> yeah, lot, lots of people just uh, 
think about nine minus 17 is eight, but actually all but nine die, so technically it's nine. But we don't see what we do with the dead ones. So if we said 17 2, we could also win that one. So a man built a house with four sides. It is rectangular with all sides facing south. A long walk's a pair. What colour is it? Well done, Chris. White. Awesome. It's because the only place you can build a house where all four sides face south is the North Pole. If you take two apples away from three apples, how many do you have? Two. Well done, Chris. I guess you've done this before. Uh, how many of each species did Moses take onto the ark? Anybody? No, none, because <laughs> it was Noah. Well done, Paul. Awesome stuff. And then if you drove a bus with 42 people from London and stopped at Watford to pick up seven more and drop off five passengers, then drove to Luton to pick up three more and drop off seven, then arrived in Edward to drop off 16, whole journey took six hours, 54 minutes. What was the name of the driver? Chloe? Jason. Chloe, <laughs> you drove the bus. So if you drove the bus, it would be you. Your name. Thank you very much for the participation in the chat. Awesome. So it's uh, <laughs> it was just it's one of my favourite icebreakers because it really does just do exactly as it says on the tin. It breaks the ice. So here we go. What are we here for? So the scope of today, I'm going to challenge you to think slightly differently. Consider your roles in your life journey. So what is it you actually do? Where are you? Consider being revolutionary. I'll cover what that means in a minute. Think about the processes of change. Think about your need for connection. And how is AI going to affect you now and in the future? So some topics to think about there as we go through. So what is revolutionary thinking? So has anybody tell me anybody tell me who that is? Feel free to contribute in the chat. Uh, Einstein, absolutely. So why is he a revolutionary thinker? Because he nearly got kicked out of school for daydreaming. And the fair fact that he had an, an imagination meant that he could imagine relativity and therefore it gave him a way to think about a concept that was so unusual to others. What about this fellow? Picasso, well done, Chris. Yeah, absolutely. Now, this fella, artist, everybody knows, famous artist, but most of his paintings during the Cubist period, where it was all sort of very square, were mathematically accurate. So more than just uh, an artist, one might say, also very clever in other ways. What about this chap? Lots of people were confused about this fella. Any ideas, Chloe? I'm sitting there thinking, what does so and so look like? And what does so and so look like? <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, this is Lewis Carroll, the guy that wrote Alice in Wonderland. He also wrote one of the most obscure poems in the English language called Jabberwocky. Um, but he taught mathematics at Cambridge. So, you know, revolutionary thinking means we start using every part of that grey noggin we have inside our skull. And what about this fella, last but not least? Anybody tell me who that is? Da Vinci, well done, Chris. Yeah, Leonardo Da Vinci. So he painted the Mona Lisa, an artist, but also an engineer. In his later drawings, when uh, it was found through all his records, he'd actually got a, a, the first design of a man-powered helicopter or a flying device. So revolutionary thinking is really about being able to use all of our mental capacity. It's about um, thinking differently about what we do and how we interact with where we are uh, and what we're doing. Um, so things that are current issues within education and think differently about mobile phone use is a current hot topic, perhaps sometimes professionalism required of staff is another stovepipe thinking won't get us anywhere. We need to think differently about how we interact with our environment and how things move on. So I started to think about who I was. So predominantly, 
I would call myself a knowledge seeker. And over time, as I've gone through life, I think that quest for knowledge has led me to be other things. So for in some parts, I've been an engineer because uh, that's what I uh, learned to do when I left school. I joined the, the military in the Air Force as an engineer fixing airplanes. People person, because I love this whole interaction dynamic with people. Teacher, because that's, again, what I've done in my business as an FE lecturer. And a professional person, because as a teacher, you're respected as a professional person to, to absolutely just um, be that person that people will go to and trust. Student, so um, finished my first degree in education and professional development. I'm halfway through a master's in psychology. So always learning, always looking for things, kind of an obvious one. Um, and then activist, uh, sorry, researcher. So I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself because I'm reading my notes. <laughs> uh, so researcher, so knowledge. If something catches my ideas, I have this horrible habit of going down rabbit holes sometimes, just trying to find out the truths of things, because I like a bit of philosophy too. Um, activist, as you'll see from one of the, the, the slides that comes up, I've started a Twitter chat called Rev Evolution to discuss those revolutionary ideas in education. I started it with a, a young lady called Jennifer Linsdall. Uh, and who knows, in the future, I might restart it, I think, because there are certainly topics around now in the education piece that people need to talk about. And then finally, but no being, by no means least, creator and innovator. So creative, thinking about things that I can do. You can see from some of the slide backgrounds and things like that, I like to create things that are visually impactful. Uh, and innovative because I like being able to embrace technology. I like being able to um, utilize all of my skills with the advent of technology to bring innovative teaching uh, to a classroom. I wonder where you are on your journey, whether you consider you're in that same space. Um, so it might be worth maybe when you get a minute spending some time to think about the roles that you fulfill in your life and are you where you want to be? So moving that on, as an agent of change, Rev Evolution, born out of a conversation that took place after one of these sort of login events with an Amplify FE uh, theme. Um, my co-creator and I saw things the same way. We wanted to raise issues we thought were important in the education. Um, at the time, we actually thought that uh, the uh, UK in itself missed a once in a generational opportunity to change the educational landscape for the better, for good. Um, and I still believe that we did miss that opportunity. Um, but being uh, a rebel or revolutionary also means it gave me a voice uh, within the education community to talk about the uh, educational reform and radicality. It needs to change. Education has for far too long been about doing something to the poor so the wealthy get the best of everything, and that needs to change. We all need to be an agent of change, perhaps. And how would I define revolution? Somebody put this on Twitter, and I thought it was brilliant. But for, for the life of me, I can't remember who it was. Um, revolution is a rebellious act, punching holes through time and space to find like-minded souls, finding friends of all different ages who question the world like you do. I think even Chloe would back me up and say, do you know what, that's exactly what Twitter chats do. We reach out into the ethereal space, connect with people who are like-minded um, to find that we have something in common and share that expertise uh, around the educational piece. So talking about change, is there a good time to do it? When should we do it? So this is a picture of a neuron in your brain. And that bright light shows that neuron connecting and firing a synapse and connecting to another one. This is why learning is hard. This is why change is difficult, because actually things have to change inside our head. But it's not necessarily so much of a bad thing if we're ready, ready for it. What we have to think about is when we do it. So. This is called the sigmoid curve. And as you can see, there are different phases as we move around this um, thing. But actually, what we need to be doing is we need to be looking at, oops, a daisy. My apologies. My pen has decided that it's mightier than the sword. Where are we? Where's it gonna go? Where is it? There it is. So this is the bit where we need to change so that the curve goes all the way up, not over the top and careers downhill. So the change needs to occur here. We need to occur, the change needs to happen here so that we keep going in this same direction and keep getting better, 
rather than roll over the top, career downhill, and go through another dip and another development slide. So when do we need to change? We need to change when things are going really, really well and be open to that to grow. So are you connected? Great question. I wonder what you think I mean by that. Um, so Kenneth Gergen wrote about the saturated self. What he means by that is the world is ever shrinking. And as you can see from this, if you just think about the number of things that we're all connected to these days, it's amazing that we hold in our hands a, a simple computer, but it allows us to connect with anybody around the world at any given point in time. Uh, and in, in, in his book, he talks about how the world shrank for him. It, it became less about letters and content and having some pause or some time to think. But now, because we're all connected via this interconnected world that people are driving at, we seem to have less and less time. You know, we seem to have less and less time to pause and think and maybe just think about where we're at and what we're doing. So my question to you is perhaps as an exercise move forward to think about how you too are connected. And so uh, this is a blank slide on purpose because what I'm about to do is I'm about to draw a, a grid. And what I'd like you to do is perhaps think about drawing this grid for yourselves when you get an opportunity because I'm running out of time, I think. So what this is about is how you're affected by what you're connected to. So here at the top, this would be individual. Forgive my hand right now, I apologise, that's awful. Individual. At the bottom is your organisation. Over here, we have for our consumption and the upper part whoops consumption spell it correctly consumption and here coming down the way we have broadcast those things we want to shout about how are we connected and then at the other end we have engagement what are the things that we engage with to create discussions or context context so for example if i was thinking about how i'm connected for, for my individual consumption one of the first things i put is linkedin because i'm connected to linkedin i'm also connected to twitter whatsapp um broadcast for work outlook um teams um facebook that's another thing that people do so you know how does this work for you some of these might actually step across so linkedin might also be over here because it connects you to other things twitter and whatsapp too so how are you connected how does this space how do you consume your social media what are the things that you use to shout about uh, throughout your organization or make your voice heard and then how do you contextualize some of that with the things that you do you know one of those might down here might be sharepoints or organizational sharepoints how do you think your you you stick these together and this was something i found really helpful and it's not until you sit and pause and take a moment to think that you actually realize just how many things you're actually connected to uh, and how that works um that's just a very, very quick illustration, but I could recommend it might be something worth doing for you in the future. Sit with an A4 page, or even if you have that many connections, maybe an A3 page, create the grid and just do some uh, moments to think about just what it means to be connected for you and how that works. So I've now got a quiz to prove just how connected you are. So what I'm looking to do here is I'm looking to put things on the page that have two meanings. So Ideally, if you have microphones, it's easier to shout out the answers and we'll get through it quite quickly rather than chat. Um, so I'm more than happy for people to shout the answers out as you see them and we'll just work through. So for example, I'll give you the first one. The first one, Apple and Angry Birds. Okay, so you're gonna see more symbols like that. And um, what I'd like to do is find out just how connected you really are and see how many you can actually get. So feel free, please, to shout out the answer 
and we'll just move through them as we go so that we can cover the content in the required amount of time and I can finish and clearly everybody can be happy. So here we go. What's the next one? What have we got? And so there are two. Android is one. What's the other one? Disney. Disney, well done. Domino's. Facebook and Domino's. <laughs> Facebook and Domino's. <laughs> Starbucks and yeah. <laughs> Starbucks and Google Chrome. Chrome. Google Chrome. Google Chrome. Yeah. What about this one? Nike and yeah. NASA. NASA. Well done. Mm. Nike and NASA. Yeah, absolutely. Well done. Twitter and Nissan. Close, but no cigar. Skoda. Yeah. Twitter and Skoda. What about this one? Well done. WhatsApp with Spotify, WhatsApp. Yeah. Yeah, WhatsApp's one. Spotify. Spotify, well done. <laughs> <laughs> Pepsi. Yep. And Wh this one catches a lot of people out. Fair trade. Mm -hmm. So put Pepsi in fair trade. Apple and Windows. Fair trade. Mm. So this one? Apple and Windows. Microsoft. Apple Windows. and Microsoft. Yeah. Windows. <laughs> Firefox. Uh, yeah, Firefox. And is that Sonic? Yeah. Oh, VW. No. V no? Mm. Looks like VW oh, and yeah. it is VW. My apologies, it is VW <laughs> and Mazda. Mazda, well done. Yeah, now we're kicking. Now we're cooking. Lego and McDonald's. Well done, Lego and McDonald's. Oh, WWF and HMV. H HMV. Well done, HMV. Yes, absolutely. Updated. Oh, Toblerone. Yeah, Toblerone and Paramount. Well done, yes, Toblerone. That's the one people miss, but Toblerone and Paramount. Well done. We can see some people. Oh, uh, hey, well okay. <laughs> and HSBC. Yeah. yeah, Ghostbusters and HSBC. <laughs> Not that they're going to ghost your bank account at all, but. Uh... <laughs> oh, yellow, uh, yellow pages and the AA. Yellow pages is one. What's the other one? Mm. The little ghost from Snapchat on the top. We've got Snapchat and Yellow Pages. This one? Uh, LG. LG and Mercedes. Uh, well done, LG and Mercedes. And the last one? Oh, Wikipedia and Mastercard. <laughs> Indeed, so anybody get it all right? Absolutely smashed it. It just shows how connected we all are in the world. Okay. So if you if you're getting all of that, then that's other connections that you're making. So you, you can see quite well connected. So the power of social media to connect people is absolutely amazing. I would have been on my knees if it hadn't been for Twitter for me, um, because with uh, joining the edgy Twitter community meant so much to me. It actually saved my bacon over lockdown. But as you can see, people, and there's a few there, just WhatsApp, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Snapchat. Um, I've tried Snapchat, not a fan. Don't do TikTok because it links to Chinese intelligence. WhatsApp or Instagram. Instagram I tried, but it really not my cup of tea. But Twitter, I've definitely found a home. So, you know, um, power of social media has recently been proven by many campaigns that require a voice. It allows the minnows to raise the game and to stick their heads above the parapet. And it allows society to come together and to bring like-minded professionals together. So I talk about education as a, as a piece, because that's where we are, to make a difference and to stand together. Uh, and I, as a member of the edgy Twitter community, as Chloe will tell you with my uh, comment about FE being the superhumans of the uh, educational community, we stand together when we talk about uh, that kind of piece through the, the application of the Twitter chat. It's really, really good. So very, very quickly, because we are kind of tight for time. So AI, 
the one big thing in the room that people are scared of. So how do we use it effectively? What we do is we make the students understand the need for critical thinking skills rather than allow them to think about, oh, I can just use it to cheat, chat, beat it, GPT, or oh, work, da, da, da. actually, no. What we really need to do is think about how we're allowing them to engage and foster that engagement with it so they can understand the need for critical thinking skills and problem solving as an assistant rather than um, otherwise. My brother has a natural aversion to computers. He has this Terminator fantasy that some robot's going to come turn up and kill him. Um, so is there a peril to society? I think if we are not careful and we don't think about it properly, there's potential there for us to end up in a lot of bother. For me, there's a thing in, uh, I don't know how many of you have seen the iRobot film, but Asimov, Isaac Asimov, wrote three laws of robotics. Those laws are actually being used by the people who thought about AI in the first place. So about the idea that robots cannot, by definition, harm a human being and must come to their aid. So there are things there that sit underneath and underpinning this piece that may say, do you know what, there might not be a peril to society. And if people think, well, are we using AI? We're already using AI. The applications that sit on your phone, we're already engaged with AI, whether we like it or not. Are we dumbing down the human race? I'd have to say no, but as long as we're in charge. And that sounds a little weird, given what I've just said that the phones do lots of AI already, but hopefully not. The last place we need to be is that we put the machines in charge and we end up disappearing as the weakest race. Not really a good idea. Do we embrace it or ignore it? I think we'd be fools not to embrace it because if we're, in my experience, if you don't embrace it, you end up falling behind or being left behind. So unfortunately, I don't think you can leave it to be ignored. And then, as I've mentioned already, critical skills that we need to impart to students about its use. So that's about engaging with students about the use of it for their benefit and not for just simply um, being able to prescriptively describe what's needed in assignment and allow them to use that way because they need to understand that actually some of the answers you get out of chat GPT isn't necessarily prescriptively good enough to get through their assignment. For me, the kicker as a teacher has always been, I can tell if somebody's first assignment wasn't really, really, really good and all of a sudden it's sparkling, it's kind of obvious. But I think we need to be aware that actually that our next burden as teachers moving forward is to actually get the students to understand the need for those critical skills. And maybe now we have a purpose to that because with the advent of AI, if they don't learn and can't discern the difference, we then might end up head for trouble. So whistle stop tour to nowhere is what I said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming. But I challenged you to think differently. Hopefully I've accomplished that endeavor just in this short period of time. Um, consider your roles in your life journey. So maybe spend some time to think about where you are and what you do. Um, we'll give you a moment of pause to think and as such, they're really difficult things to do. You know, uh, I guess what I'm really trying to say, I think change is inevitable, like the infamous throwaway comment about the only constants in life are death and taxes. Our country and our educational system is headed for a dystopian legacy of gargantuan proportions. We have perhaps missed an opportunity, as I've said already, in the once in a generational chance to save it. We're no longer the oppressed, as Free Air might say. We are rising to realise our own futures and those of our children and theirs. You know, so consider being revolutionary. Stand up to things that you don't think are right. Maybe, you know, through the power of that social media, we can create a campaign to be heard and have a voice and make a difference. Think about the processes of change. Changing things are good when it's easy because that makes the change process much easier. Rather than doing the difficult thing in the hard yards when we're in the decline bit, it's not really such a great idea. The need for connection, well, these things are only going to get more capable and we are only going to have more need of it. Linda Gratton wrote a book called The Shift. The future of work is already here. I know of a professor, a surgeon in the Royal Bath Hospital, he's a heart surgeon who does operations with Snapchat and Facebook. He's had avatars next to him who are specialists in their fields whilst he's doing operations to be able to do it. So he's had his Snapchat goggles on doing operations. The guy is absolutely amazing. Um, follow him lots on Twitter as well because he's just a really, really nice bloke. Met him too. And then I got you to think about, albeit very briefly, with my statements about how I is going to affect you now and in the future. That's kind of where we've gone in our whistle stop tour. For me, 
it's always been about the supreme art of the teacher to awaken joy and creative expression and knowledge. But as Einstein says, I have no special talents. I am only passionately curious and will remain so. Are there any questions, ladies and gentlemen? Maybe Chloe might allow a few minutes for questions if you have any, because that was really a whistle stop to I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you, Arlene. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. I look forward to <laughs> watching it in the Amplifier Feast face on uh, YouTube again. Just to see where I went horribly wrong. <laughs> Thank you all for coming.